The, the idea of COVID came, uh, came out of discussions that uh, we had at the beginning of the pandemic when it basically was starting to reach the, uh, the U.S. cities uh, and, and realizing that the information that we were getting from, the, from publications and from preprints uh, was always, even though it was diffused quite quickly, was always a little bit behind the, the anecdotal experience of physicians and especially uh, physicians across the globe uh, who have had a, an unfortunately very uh, early and uh, rich experience with COVID patients. And, and there were a lot of questions that, that we really wanted to know, uh, in particular about how the epidemic would affect outpatient populations, so patients with uh, hematologic malignancies, and whether they would be at higher risk, under what circumstances, whether the disease would present differently, whether the management would be different. Uh, and we, we wanted, we thought that it would be useful for uh, physicians across the world to have a forum where questions can be asked and answered directly without uh, the, the added uh, uh, time requirements of collecting data and uh, sorting it out for publication and getting it peer reviewed, but just anecdotal experience about how uh, physicians were dealing with their patients and what they were seeing that could benefit everybody almost in real time. So that was the, that was the impetus uh, behind covid -19. As Philip mentioned, this, this, is, this is a forum. This is not meant to um, give recommendations or official guidelines, although some of the advices are supported by literature, but this is also um, giving the opportunity to, for physicians to share their own personal experiences. And so um, this, this forum is meant for physicians. It's, it's restricted for, to physicians only, but then you have to uh, decide, you know, if, if it's, if you consider this as, as a good quality or not, but it's not like, it's not peer reviewed, um, as Philip mentioned, it's just providing additional information to uh, what we can learn from, from publications. There are a lot of people who have signed up. Um, I think the last time I looked, there were hundreds of, um, of uh, physicians who had signed up to the site. And we've been We've been fortunate in, in many respects. Uh, one is that early on, we had the help of a, a software engineer, uh, Eric Ventillard, who basically helped to, um, to customize the platform for our needs and, and did, a, I think, a really nice job. Uh, and the help of the platform itself, so Discourse, which was kind enough to, to host the site uh, for free. Uh, and then we've also had the, the, the benefit of participation from uh, many hemat hematology societies from a lot of countries like France, Italy, UK, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand. So a lot of places that have basically kindly uh, advertised the site to their members in an effort to get really globe-wide participation. And then I think the, the next question is whether there will be enough uh, interest for people to really share a lot of their information and questions and answers and that that uh, remains to be seen but but we hope that's where it goes next okay so this is what the covid team website uh looks like just like any other forum you can um so ask our and answer questions so first of all you can just go through all the all the topics and posts that have been discussed um and uh so you can just like click on whatever is of interest for you and just go through the discussions um, you know, from top to bottom if you want and see what people have been discussing and talking about. Um, and you know who's, who's been discussing, so you can click on the person's uh, profile and know, you know where, who is, uh, what is his institution, his specialty, his country. Um, and so this is, this is the first way you can uh, use the forum. It's just, to go through the discussions and learn about what people have been doing. Um, and the other way is if you have a specific question, so either you find it through, you know, scrolling through the different topics, or you can just um, enter the keyword in, in the search bar uh, to look for what is of interest. So like, let's say you want to know more about Ibrutinib during the COVID uh, pandemic, you just um, pick Ibrutinib and enter and then you'll find all the topics that have been discussing about the and you just you know pick one and just 
read about it and see what people have said about it. And if you don't find the answer to your question here, you can always um, ask uh, for your own question by clicking on new topic, either here or here. Um, and then you just you know, enter a title for your post and then ask a question and publish it. And then people from the community hopefully will answer your question or share their experience. Um, it's not only about uh, asking questions and answering questions, it could also be about sharing an original or interesting experience that may be useful for the community. So you just can create posts about uh, such experiences. One, one other thing I want to mention, so this is the main forum. We also have a category that's called resources, where we're sharing resources that, are, that can be useful for hematologists in the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so we've, we've listed here a number of resources that you know, can be useful and anybody is free to add any additional resources that he feels like would be useful for the community. So it's also a nice way of sharing uh, the information. Um, and finally, I uh, just want to mention this uh, ping bar here where uh, you can invite other physicians. So this website, this forum is really restricted to physicians and uh, we want to give anyone the possibility to invite other physicians. So you just have to click, click on this link and, and then you can send uh, invites um, to any physicians, not only hematologists, but you know, infectious disease doctors maybe uh, will be important as well, intensive care physicians and others. I was just uh, going to ask, add something to, to what Rock was saying about the, the restriction of the site to physicians. It's really it's not meant to be a restrictive uh, choice, but it is really meant to keep the site from becoming um, uncontrolled and uncontrollable and making sure that uh, the, the physicians who post uh, are not worried about patients or media uh, being on the site and, and um, and using the information in other ways. So that, that was the impetus behind restricting it to physicians, but it's not meant as a, um, uh, it's not meant as a snobbish uh, restriction. The primary answer is no. And again, we, we want to make sure that, that everyone feels free to post information without, uh, without fearing they're being scooped or anything like that. Uh, at the same time, it's great if it can give people ideas of things to try or things to look for uh, that could eventually become research or publication. So, so it, we would be very happy if it nucleated ideas for publications, but the site is not intended for that. It's really intended for free exchange of observations, questions, ideas. And one more thing is, I don't think this is meant to replace evidence-based medicine. But I think it's very complementary of that. And with this kind of forum, we'd be actually you know, sharing and capturing different information than the ones we're actually learning from, from the literature. So I think it could be a different way of, of um, you know, learning and, and sh you know, working together with, with other physicians. I think that it's going to change clinical medicine in rather profound ways uh, because just like it's changing the rest of the world, it is forcing us to do things differently. The, the clinic is completely different for us than what it used to be in terms of patient volume, patient flow, uh, telemedicine use, and even the, the, the requirement to look again at our therapies and prioritize them and say, well, what, what do we really need to do? And what impact does what we do now have on patients' future? For example, one of the questions that, that came up from Rock and others is, we use a lot of uh, rituximab or other anti-CD20 antibodies, and we use a lot of it, even in, in circumstances where there is no overall survival benefit. And yet we know that using those drugs may impair the ability of patients to mount immune responses, and in particular to mount vaccination responses. In this, in this world, uh, this may become most relevant and much more relevant than we've given it credit to now. 
So it is thrusting questions like this in, in a very, in a, in a much uh, brighter light than we are used to thinking about them. And, and I think that that will change how we practice. Uh, and on top of that, beyond the, beyond oncology practice, the, the scientific advances, the, the rapidity of development of testing, uh, of uh, um, vaccination strategies is phenomenal for this. It, it is, the, the pace of scientific advances is just astounding and that will stay with us. And I hope uh, make us better prepared for the next time this kind of thing happens, which unfortunately seems inevitable. Yeah, maybe I will add one, one more thing as we're all now getting to doing more and more uh, telemedicine. Um, we, we realize that you know, uh, telemedicine has its own limitations for sure, but in certain circumstances for certain patients, it could really be very useful. And so I think we're, we're learning how to use these kind of tools. And this is something we may also keep in the future for certain situations.